Welcome back to part two of the step-by-step -step DIY aquarium build. You know it's gonna be a good aquarium when you can sit inside of it, right? All right, so the uh, thumbnail gave it away. We are starting to build up with the plywood now. Uh, we're moving off of our base. Uh, we're building up the, uh, the sides, all the walls of the aquarium. We're gonna build the frame for the front glass. And because this aquarium is a little different, instead of having a sump underneath, it's gonna have an internal filter. We're gonna go ahead and start building all that. We're gonna get everything ready uh, for the next stage, which will be fiberglassing and epoxy coating. So by the time this video is done, we're gonna have the complete frame of the aquarium done and it's gonna be ready to take it to the waterproofing level. All right, let me get to work. Okay, we're back outside at my uh, pickup truck and uh, wheelbarrow uh, workshop here because uh, we all know I love building aquariums, but I hate cleaning up sawdust, so uh, I like it out here. All right, so what have we done? We have made the bottom 60 by 40, the back 58 by 5 by 34, and uh, 40 by 34, 45 by 34 for the sides. So that's what you're seeing here. These are our sides at 40 inches front to back, 34 inches tall. Uh, this is our back at 58.5 uh, long, 34 inches tall. And this is the bottom of our aquarium, 60 inches long, 40 inches front to back. All right, everything's cut. It's time to get it inside. And uh, this thing's gonna start looking like an aquarium pretty quick here. All right, let's go. Okay, before we start building up and putting the uh, plywood on this aquarium, I wanna just show you what I did, uh, finishing up from the last video from part one is I just went ahead and took some scrap wood. As you can see, this is old, discolored. There's a cut there, a separate piece. It's just screwed in with a couple screws, nothing major. This is just for the front fascia. This is nothing structural in these two pieces right here. Same thing over here, just filling in so that when I put the front of the aquarium on, I have something to screw into, keep it nice and flush. And the same thing on the back. Again, like I pointed out in part one, not structural, just took some uh, scrap pieces of wood and just screwed it in there, you know, just to make, basically make it, uh, you know, that tiny little, you know, tiny little bit of over overlap will just be supported. So no big deal there. Um, but this is the stand complete. So I've got it pulled out from the wall, obviously, to make it easier to work because it's a lot easier to start building up the tank up here. So I'm going to get the plywood on here and uh, we'll start getting it put together and then we'll go into detail about, you know, how we're going to build the actual aquarium. Okay, I brought in all the plywood. I put the base over here and the back and the sides are leaned up over here against Predator Bay. You always wanna find something sturdy to lean your wood up against. A 2,000 gallon shark tank should suffice. Uh, but as far as the base goes, we went ahead and laid it on the stand uh, because we're gonna be doing the work up high so we don't have to bend over, which is nice. And uh, an important thing is you do not wanna screw this down. We're gonna to wanna to pull it off and we're gonna be moving it around because we need to screw and glue all these sides on. So we're gonna be needing to shift this thing all around as we work, uh, even when we build the picture frame, it needs to be mobile. So we're not going to anchor it to the stand really until the very end, um, until I'm getting ready to fiberglass because then I'll need to fill the screw holes and all that. So uh, until that point, we want this mobile so we can work with it. So let me go ahead and mock up these pieces uh, or get these pieces in place, I should say, and uh, it should start to look like an aquarium. I would think already, if anyone was thinking it didn't look like 315 gallons, it should start to look like it once the plywood's on there. It's a pretty sizable piece of real estate there for fish, but once the vertical sides are on, yeah, you'll really see it's, it's getting big. All right, so let me get it all set up. All right, you're probably like me and you don't make mistakes, but just in case, I find it's best to always just mock up the aquarium. Uh, just go ahead and uh, just throw a couple clamps on there, make sure you got all the cuts right. Now, obviously you see a seam there. That's just because there's just one little clamp holding it up top. It's not really connected in any real way. Uh, again, just mocking it up. So just a sanity check to make sure you got all the cuts right. And we can see that uh, everything more or less fits. So the cuts are done right. It's just a matter now of uh, clamping up one side at a time and getting it screwed and, and grew, uh, glued and screwed. But uh, also you're sort of getting an idea for how massive uh, the tank is. So it is a true 315 gallons so of uh, internal water space. So it is a big aquarium, uh, which is, you know, it's important because we're factoring in all the costs and everything. So it's interesting to see 
you know, how big an aquarium can you get for the price? But uh, so the mock-up is is correct, uh, very important, and uh, to to do this. Uh, I can't emphasize enough, you don't want to start uh, gluing and screwing things too early. Always double check your work, especially where it's hard to come back from. So uh, the mock-up is complete, and now we're going to work on uh, one side at a time, and we're going to put glue and screws, and we're going to get this thing connected together. Okay, so what we've done is we've uh, we've got the side position, we've we've taken down the mock-up the mock of the boards, we've got the bottom, the base of the aquarium, over here, we're gonna be doing it sideways. So we're gonna basically be connecting them like this. So first step is get the boards positioned, get the clamps all ready. And then we're gonna put the glue along the bottom board. Then we're gonna move the side board into place onto the glue, get it clamped up, get a screw in there, get down to the, the bottom, get that clamped up, get a screw in there, and then get the middle lined up and get a screw. Uh, while every while the glue is still is uh, not not set yet, um, it's tricky, especially you know doing it by yourself. So, but what you want to do is get the top corner, get the bottom, then get the middle. Then you can come back and we'll put all the screws in, and uh, I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, there is a completed seam. So uh, you want to use lots and lots of glue, plenty of glue. Uh, it's going to squeeze out. You're going to wipe it off. Uh, it's definitely important to wipe it off on the inside because uh, you don't want to have anything bubbling up when you do your fiberglassing. Uh, so you just want to get it smooth. But as you can see, you get a very nice smooth seam. And uh, the glue is critical. Uh, I want to show you the edge of the plywood. So this is five ply plywood. Um, at a normal store like a Home Depot or Lowe's, they generally only carry three and five ply. You definitely want five ply. It's a lot stronger uh, than three ply. Uh, if you can get more, that's better. The, the more plies, the stronger. But generally, this is what they sell at, at uh, regular hardware stores. Um, but as you can see, when you're screwing screws in there, that's you've got uh, a lot of compressed wood in there. It's not a lot to bite into for the screws. So the glue is critical because the glue is essentially um, going to create a seamless bond along there. And the screws are really just to get that glue uh, set really well. Um, give you an idea how important it is. I would never do this without the glue. I would never just do the screws. Uh, not, would never do that. So <laughs> I can't emphasize enough, use the wood glue. Um, make sure you use a lot, let it squeeze out and then just get it cleaned up with a rag or a uh, paper cloth. So that's one side done. And uh, once this, we're gonna go ahead and let this set and then I'm gonna work on the other side there. And then once the two sides are done, uh, I can go ahead and pick this up and put it up onto the stand and we can do the back up there. It'll be a lot easier to film and show you these seams. It's all the exact same work, just done multiple times. So this essentially flips forward. You know, this is the bottom here. So this will flip up, go up here, and then we'll do that back seam uh, and we'll have better video with that. But all that's happening here is we're running glue down the inside, we're putting the board on, and then we're screwing it together. Okay, so I picked it up and put it back up on the stand. Uh, we have the left side, we have the base, and we have the right side. Uh, now comes the fun part, which is the back panel, because not only does it have to be glued and screwed on the right and on the left, but also on the bottom and all at the same time. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll put the glue everywhere, we'll pick the board up, we'll put it in place, we'll take our clamps and we'll clamp the top corners of each side. We'll get those screwed in on the top corners then we'll get the bottom lined up uh, on each bottom piece and uh, then we will slide this out. We'll get the middle bottom piece lined up and then we'll get the middles on the on the sides. And then once that's all done, it just go back and start screwing in all the screws all the way across. Uh, so, yeah, no way, no two ways about it. The, the last board's uh, a pain, but at least the nice part about it is you do get it locked in on both sides. So it is nice and firm and uh, just a lot of screwing really um, once you get that those first few screws in top bottom middle that gets the alignment that's your alignment uh, so you get a nice clean you know line like this where it's lined up once you get that done it's just a lot of boop 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 putting in the screws but uh, all right let me get this uh, last one up here get it glued and screwed and then we'll take a look okay as you can see after I did the sides I went ahead and leaned it over to make it easier to get to the bottom row there 
So uh, it's all done. This is probably the hardest part of the whole build. But uh, yeah, the sides and the bottom, they're all screwed in. So let me flip this over and we'll take a look. Okay, now we have our plywood box. It's actually starting to look like something. Uh, so I went ahead and got all the screws in the side, screwed and glued across the bottom and up the other side. And I wish I could tell you that I always build these things flawlessly without any little mistakes, uh, but that's usually not the case. I usually make a couple little mistakes. Uh, we're gonna look at a couple of those right now and we're gonna talk about how to solve them. Okay, the two mistakes I made is one, I screwed through the front here. So into the aquarium when I was coming up from the bottom. So this is an easy one. Uh, all you gotta do is just sand off any, you know, any excess wood sticking off. And then we're gonna use uh, filler, wood filler before we do the fiberglassing. So it's gonna be wood filled, sanded, and then fiberglassed over. So that's gonna be good. And the other one here is just a little bit of a crack there. Um, even though it is screwed in, a uh, little imperfection in the cut on the wood. Once again, we're gonna take care of that with uh, wood filler and uh, fiberglass. So, and these are good examples of why we fiberglass all the seams. For one, this is the weakest point. All of our seams are the weakest points and all of our lowest seams are the weakest because there's the most water pressure low down low in the aquarium and as you go up, there's less and less pressure. So if you're gonna have a, uh, a failure, it's gonna be on a seam along the bottom, most likely, <laughs> unless you do a, a really bad job waterproofing or something like that. But it's usually not the case, usually a seam and usually down low. So, but it's no problem. Small mistakes like that can happen and it's not gonna compromise the build whatsoever. And when we're done, it'll be like it's not even there. Um, though saying that, it is important uh, that each stage of the build that you don't cut corners and, and think to yourself, I'm gonna make it up uh, you know, with the, the next stage of the build. Like if you have really sloppy seams with big gaps and everything, and you're having to do a ton of filler, thinking, oh, the fiberglass will take care of it. Or if, you, if your cuts are completely not straight at all, and you've got uh, you know, flex in there, and you're like, oh, I'll take care of it with you know, the pond armor. That, that'll just fill it all in to get, you know. Uh, don't do that. Take your time, do each stage right, get a nice clean, build a good foundation and you will have a, a very, very solid tank. So this is, uh, as far as the plywood goes, we are done with plywood. Now it is time to go ahead and frame in the picture window here on the front uh, for our glass panel. And kind of give you a little bit of a size comparison. That's a 150 cube over there. And you can see our 315 is very, very chunky. It is deeper, it is taller, it is longer. So going to be a really cool aquarium. In fact, it's kind of hard to get far enough back from it with Predator Bay here to get it all in because it is such a big chunky tank. Uh, and also, I have not, still have not screwed the tank down uh, to the base yet. Uh, I like to make, I like to go as far as I can um, before I have to do that. And I, when the picture frame is where I'm going to have to do that, but I'm going to go ahead and do a uh, once over, make sure everything is good. Uh, and then the next stage will be uh, going ahead and screwing uh, the tank here, the plywood tank, down to the base and, and have the picture frame built for the glass, which is also going to screw into the base. So it's getting ready to become one big, thick <laughs> DIY aquarium. All right, before I get started building in the whole front frame for the glass, I wanted to show you uh, the very first mock-up. So again, like, like I did with the plywood, I go ahead and I just get everything in place and get it clamped and everything, just to do a quick mock-up, a sanity check to make sure all the measurements are right and everything. So you can see we've got the very beginnings of the uh, frame. Now, we need to create more space for the glass to adhere to with the silicone. So it's not gonna be just one two by four all the way around for the face. We're gonna have a couple layers. So we're gonna, we're gonna do this first layer where you wanna have the bottom plate then you want to have the risers on top of that and then the top plate on top of the risers. It's very key for strength that that's how you build it. Just like how we did with the plywood, the sides need to go on top of the bottom, not connected to the side. It's much stronger to do it this way. It's the same with the front. The bottom piece goes all the way across, the top piece goes all the way across, and then they sit and then the top sits on the supports. Now the next layer is going to be the same way. So we're going to put on the bottom piece, we're gonna add the supports going up, and then we're gonna have the other piece across the top. So that's the mechanism that gives us the most strength, and it's gonna build out. It's gonna build out width-wise, 
and from the bottom and from the top so that there's room for that silicone gasket as well as you need to have some tank that's above the water line so for example if the glass came to here and the water line was here anytime if you weren't using a sump anytime the water level would drip dip down a little bit for evaporation you'd see it now if you're using a sump that wouldn't be a concern because the water would be going down in the sump not in the tank but in this case we're using an internal filtration system so this tank the water level in the tank will go down with evaporation so we need to make sure we have a good chunky area up here of airspace above the water line so we can fill past that and have room for the water level to fluctuate up and down uh, with evaporation without dipping below the line of the frame of the tank so that you see it in the glass so we want all that taking place out of view so the view from the front the water level is always above the glass okay so now that this is mocked up i'm going to go ahead and get this all screwed in i'll do the entire frame and then uh, i'll show you what we have so it is definitely starting to look like a fish tank now let's take a look uh, at the window and uh, the path forward from here so this is where i have to sort of diverge from the normal build so normally this would be the window so we have the uh, framing for the window, you can see it's supported down like that. And if we needed to go wider, we'd support there, but this is far enough for what we need. Um, see the bottom, it's all screwed in. So if I was gonna go with a sump build underneath, this would be the window pane here. I would just get a five foot long piece of glass and it would be put inside of here. But you notice right here, some lines drawn because this is where the baffle is going to be for the internal filtration so actually our window is only going to be from here over so it's going to be a four foot window uh, because we're not going to be drilling holes and running plumbing down to a sump like my other aquariums we're going to be going with internal filtration and that's going to allow us to put this right up against that wall back there and nothing ugly coming off the sides uh, so when we finish the outside of the tank it will look nice uh, as well as I want to try an internal wetlands filter a lot, so I decided this is the perfect build to do it. So uh, I wanted to show you, uh, if you're just doing a, a full sheet of glass here, this is what it would look like. Um, you know, you're good to go. This is a five foot piece of glass, and we, you know, when we go to silicone it in, you, you'll see how it would work there. Um, so the other stuff I've done is added a little bit of bracing. So you see a brace across the back, which is a two by four vertically, and it's screwed in the sides and it's screwed in the back. And uh, this does two things. This gives us our cross brace in the back. We're heavily braced at the bottom and we're braced at the top and the bottom and the front. And this gives us our back brace. But even more importantly, it gives us the place to screw into for our cross braces. And that's what these two by twos on the sides are. These, are, these aren't really so much they do give rigidity to the aquarium, but they're not so much for that as they are for something to screw into for the cross braces. Because there's ultimately gonna be a cross brace on the side, the middle, and the other side. So all the bracing, all the woodwork for the bracing is done for the aquarium if you were just gonna do a five foot piece of glass. So now what's gonna happen though for this build is I'm going to install the baffle. So this you have to do correctly because um, if you uh, if if you if you don't you're going to make your life very difficult because I'm going to be building it up with multiple pieces of wood and I need to be able to do all the uh, all the fiberglass work before I put the baffle in so I need to build the baffle externally get it ready and then do all the glassing I can first then put the baffle in, then do the additional glassing just for the baffle. Uh, because it, once you build up a tall baffle here, it's not gonna be easy to get down there and do the fiberglassing work. So gotta be very smart about it and do it at the very last minute and then brace it in. So also, eventually there will be braces coming up here and there will be a baffle going across there. And then this will be covered up over here on the inside. There will be three quarter inch plywood on the inside connecting into the baffle so uh, a little bit different than if you were just doing a traditional build so i just want to point that out and one thing i want to cover is why i chose the height i chose for off you know for the for the window so why is it three inches tall why is it on the sides why is there three inches here so why does the top have three boards and the bottom only has two 
Well, you have to have room for the silicone gasket because the way it works is the glass is pushed up against the frame, of course, on the inside. Uh, and then in between the, the, the painted frame and the glass is your silicone gasket. So you're gonna have a big bead of silicone and you're gonna smoosh it up against it and then it's gonna be, that's the gasket. Then the secondary silicone, you'll come along the edges and you'll create the sealing silicone. So all your pressure is down here. The higher you go, the less pressure you get. So the way I build these is I do a full three inch uh, gasket at the bottom. So the, the glass is gonna be sitting on the bottom, it's gonna be up against the front, and it's gonna have a big chunky three inch silicone gasket uh, of, or, or silicone. On the sides, there's, there's three inches available. I usually use two to give myself room to put a nice big ceiling bead in there. If you go all the way to the edge, uh, if there's any flex with the sides, or I mean, well, it shouldn't be flex, but it's harder to get that bead in uh, if you go all the way. So I like to go two inches on the side, and then on the top, I just go one inch because there is no water pressure up here at all. <laughs> so, so you know, one, one, one and a half inch gasket at the top is plenty. So since the wood is uh, two by four, so it's one and a half inches, so one and a half inches of gasket at the top, two inches of gasket at the side, three inches of gasket at the bottom, and then once the glass is in on the gasket, then comes the ceiling bead around the edges on uh, the bottom, all the sides of the glass. So, where do we go from here? Okay, so this is part, this is the end of part two. So where do we go from here? Well, first of all, let's put up on the screen now uh, all the additional materials used in part two, and let's get a running total up to this point. Uh, one thing you'll notice is that I bought one extra two by six that I didn't need and I had one less two by four that I didn't need. So I went ahead and I swapped that out and the price uh, basically saves us a couple bucks and um, added in the new materials that went into this build. So for part three, what we're gonna focus on is I'm gonna build that baffle and get it all ready to install, uh, but then hold off on installing until after I go and, fi and fill and fiberglass the inside of the aquarium. And at the same time, we'll be working on the external trim that ultimately is gonna be the cosmetic trim, but it also serves a purpose to vertically stiffen the sides of the aquarium. So there are gonna be screws going into it. It does have a structural component as well as a uh, aesthetic component. So uh, that's gonna be, you're basically gonna see the continuation of bracing. You're gonna see all the filling, fiberglassing. Everything will be ready to the point where we're gonna start painting with pond shield. In fact, maybe pond shield will happen in that video. It's quite possible. Uh, but once the pond shield is in, or I'm sorry, once the uh, fiberglassing is done, the baffle for the internal filtration will go in. And then once that's in, we're on to pond shield and uh, top bracing. And then that's, that's the aquarium's ready to go at that point. So we are getting pretty close, pretty darn close. So stay tuned for part three. And uh, this is now really, really gonna look like an aquarium at the end of part three. Thanks for watching.